I'm breathing underwater, I'm weightless through space. I'm soaring like an eagle all over this place. Creatures most will never see are waiting there to look at me. And all I got to do is breathe underwater. We're watching routine doings at the Seaview Secret Dock, especially this guy. Look, if the room is that messy, you get in there and clean it. You do not kill it with fire. We watch a bunch of firefighters muster and head to the dock. Except those guys aren't firefighters. These men are genuine, honest to peg leg pirates, and they're hijacking the Sea View. All of you, hands up in the air. Hold it! That's better. At once! Successfully, I might add. He'll lock Chip in the officer's lounge, put the other men in a room of their own, and take Nelson and Crane to the control room. That guy steps up to the con and starts giving orders to get underway while we meet the real boss. Admiral Nelson, I'm delighted to meet you. And Captain Crane, of course. You may call me Mr. Logan. Once I was called Yana Skorzeny, but that was back when I was a vampire trying to escape Kolchak. That's how we know Barry Atwater. He was a well-known and well-loved character actor for his entire career, but his career got cut short. He was fighting cancer when he suffered a stroke and died a few days after his 60th birthday. When you watch him in this role, it's easy to understand why he was so successful. He'll scare the liver out of you. And he really expects handshakes? Gentlemen, my captain, Igor. The best submariner that money could buy. Carry on, captain. He's bought plans, blueprints, and specs on the boat from various spies, and his crew knows the craft intimately. When four security guards climb onto the sub and start trying to open the hatches, he orders a crash dive and leaves the guards to drown. That tells us what our chances of reasoning with him are. Once they're underway, he reveals his plan and how the sea view fits in. Incidentally, if you think Curly and the others are just going to sit around and wait and see what happens, you haven't been watching the show very attentively. So you finally decided to feed us. <laughs> Big, rough, tough man with a gun will throw Kowalski a beating and nobody can intervene because of the other big, rough, tough mans with guns. These guys are real macho when they're holding weapons, but every man in that room wants to see what they can do without the crutches. This is what bullies grow up to be and why it's necessary to stand up to them and cut them down to size early and often. In the observation room, Logan is having dinner with Nelson and Crane and discussing his favorite subject. Adventurer, freebooter, and now buccaneer. That's a role I rather fancy. I hope I don't need to point out that his favorite subject is himself. Crane doesn't care about his boasting. What does he want? Gentlemen, you should feel truly honored to share in what's the most brilliant coup in my long and distinguished career. Honored is hardly the word. Perhaps not. But since you're to be directly involved, you should at least be mildly curious. After all, I stole your submarine out from under your very noses. So you must admit I'm a quite resourceful man. Don't you agree, Admiral? Crane will have to wait for his answer because Logan isn't done praising himself. 
And by the way, the three most dangerous words in the English language are, don't you agree? What I seek is a certain lady, the most beautiful, the most desirable female in the whole wide world. But why get us mixed up with your love life? Oh, not you, gentlemen. Your incomparable submarine. With it, I can obtain the unobtainable. And in due time, you shall see how. The unobtainable lady, as you may have figured out, goes by the name of La Jaconda, better known to Americans as the Mona Lisa. A French warship is transporting it to the World's Fair in Australia, and he intends to redirect it to his own private collection. This is a good reason to ship it by air and get it there a lot faster. Steal the Mona Lisa. You see, I told you Logan was insane. I wish you were right. No, Lee, he has a brilliant mind. I've been studying him carefully. There was, uh, there was something familiar about him all along, but I, I couldn't quite put my finger on it for a while. And now? But now I've placed him. I never knew him, of course. But, uh, and his name wasn't always Logan. He used all sorts of names. But this man is without doubt the greatest adventurer and the most wanted criminal of our time. And he's quite proud of himself for it. As Crane told Chip, he never shuts up. The problem with that is he says very little. Nelson told Mr. Logan that the pirate's life ends with a rope, but Logan insists he's way smarter than all those klutzy guys who came before him. Nelson says, our first step will be to rejoin what's left of our crew. They just have to figure out how. I'm looking at that huge wall vent behind him and thinking, they've used that before, use it again. And they will. I'm just being a little impatient and premature about it. Slow to one-third. Come to course. One, five, four. Forward missile room. Ready nuclear missiles. One, three, five, seven. If that order was meant to impress me, you're wasting your time. You won't sink that ship with a Mona Lisa aboard. I sincerely hope it won't be necessary. In a large measure, it's up to you, Admiral. He wants to hit it with four nuclear missiles? I bet this guy drives a huge, shiny, four-door compensation pickup, too. He's the kind of tiny ego who has to do everything as bigly as possible because it makes him feel like a man. Any reply from the Lorraine's captain? Yes, sir, he's heaving, too. But he refuses to accept the boarding party. He wants to know if Admiral Nelson's lost his mind. I expected that. Tell him Admiral Nelson wishes to speak to him. He wants Nelson to tell the captain to stand down and be boarded. He really thinks Nelson will do this without an argument. Hello, Captain. This is Mr. Logan. I'm now in command of the nuclear submarine Seaview. Unless you accept our boarding party, you will be sunk. You have exactly 60 seconds to make up your mind. Here's Admiral Nelson. He'll tell you I mean business. You're bluffing. It won't fire, because if you do, you destroy the thing you value most. You underestimate me, Admiral. Always a fatal mistake. I made up my mind that unless I can possess her, no one else ever will. He'll destroy it rather than let someone else have it. How many times have we heard that? Except he's serious and the Admiral knows it. He has to capitulate and explain things to the French captain because this guy is crazy enough to destroy a priceless treasure and cause a nuclear disaster over a temper tantrum. He'll allow a boarding party on two conditions. What are they? The boarding party is limited to four men. And I'm one of them. Done. I was expecting one of the conditions to be that they're unarmed, but I guess the captain knew better than to try and push it that far. You're right about Logan. He is a maniac. And I'm convinced the minute he gets the Mona Lisa, he's going to sink that ship. And we can't do a thing to stop him. Can't we? Lee, can you crack the grid on that vent? He's done it before, I assume he can do it again. Admiral Nelson has been mapping out those vents. That duct carries the main electrical conduit from the control room to the missile room. Of course. The whole missile guidance system depends on it. I'll cut the conduit. Before I get back from the rain with the picture, be sure that line is cut. Will do. 
All he has is a dinky pocket knife, but it'll have to do. The French captain is ready to fight and have his ship sunk rather than give up the painting, but he knows his ship can't beat the sea view, especially since Logan is preparing the nukes. Never. I cannot do this. But you must. Uh, look at it this way. As long as the painting is undamaged, it can be recovered. If Logan has it somewhere, we can track him down and take it from him. If it's at the bottom of the ocean, we can't do that. Once the painting is on board the sea view, Logan is ready for the next step. She's safely aboard at last. I've done it. I've won her. They're not leaving, sir. What? The Lorraine isn't leaving. They must be planning to track us. Indeed they do. The captain said as much. Logan really expected this guy just to surrender the painting and then slink away. The captain of the French Navy's flagship. This guy is so full of himself, he probably expected the captain to say, You want fries with that? Captain, ready your nuclear missiles. Blow that ship out of the water. Fortunately, Captain Crane has just about finished cutting the wires. And even though the ship is heavily armored, the Sea View's torpedoes can do the job. Going nuclear isn't necessary. But it makes his wiener feel bigger. Fire one. Well? It, uh... It didn't fire, sir. What's the matter with it? I don't know. Get Crane and Nelson up here, fast. As if they're gonna tell him anything, Logan orders a dive while they sort the problem out. Soon enough, they've outrun anybody chasing them. That duct ends at the gyro control room. When you get there and throw the gyro control, the ship will lurch from side to side. Timing's the important thing, then. If the steward brings dinner to our man at 1800, it should work. But if he doesn't? I believe he will. The way Igor plans his watches, I can almost guarantee you that dinner will be served at exactly 1,800 hours. Which means I'll have to start crawling through that vent 15 minutes before that. That should throw the guards off enough for the men to overpower them and escape. Chip, you'll have to crawl through the vents of the crew's quarters and explain the plan to them. Look at that! Chip gets to do something! The poor guy has been cooling his heels in this room the whole episode. He reaches the men and fills them in. The four men are Curly, Kowalski, Patterson, and Expendable Extra. It's time for Crane to head in. Well, gentlemen, good evening. I promised you a reward. I always keep my promises. I want you to come with me. You mean... Right now? Yes. Insist. In that case, I'll have dinner alone right here. No, 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 no. I wouldn't think of it. Please, join us. That blows the snot out of this plan. The reward is the Mona Lisa. Gentlemen, I brought you together here for the rare privilege of sharing with me this... this culminating moment. This last sublime achievement in a brilliant career. Oh, I, I apologize for the hasty summons, but I'm sure such mundane considerations will soon be forgotten. You're about to meet the most provocative, the most unattainable female who's ever lived. Gentlemen. That switch would do the trick. They just have to reach it and time this right. also need to hope she's good and stable when this goes down. It's a decent replica, fairly accurate in size, though I don't know anything about the frame a la 1965. Call it good enough for television. Uh, What's wrong with him? He's sick. Yeah, he's got a fever. He needs a doctor. 
Your lousy cooking did this to him. Shame on you. Somebody better look him over. Uh-uh. You. Mm. You better take a look. The boat should lurch any time now. Waiting, waiting, waiting. But they planned for this. The whole thing about Kowalski being sick is to keep those guys in here in case the plan goes wonky. You'll be the last outsiders ever to see her. Expendable extra expended. They make it to the missile room and the mini sub. Round up all tear gas grenades. You got that hatch, Chief? Yes, sir. Patterson will drag a big hose through the ducts to the control room. Then they'll use the battery in the mini sub to run a makeshift pump and send all that nice tear gas to Logan and crew. Hey, Logan was nice enough to show them the Mona Lisa, and one good turn deserves another. The gas will force them to surface and open the hatches. Meanwhile, Captain Crane is getting into scuba gear. Patterson will be in position in a couple of minutes. Now the question is, how do we get out of here with our tear gas grenades? Look, look at this. Oh, it's like having our own private tank. It's made to withstand the pressure of the deep ocean so a few bullets shouldn't bother it much. In the ducks, Patterson may have a problem. They crawl in and start following the noise and the hose. All he can do is keep going and hope he can stay a good distance ahead of them. Paul Trinka is a tragic story. This was his only steady acting job, although Irwin gave him a couple of bit parts in Land of the Giants. He could have done a lot more, but a few years after that, a brain tumor killed him at the ripe old age of 41. There's a reason I can't say that C word without an expletive in front of it. The lead guy has a gun. I hope the following guy doesn't, because in these tight quarters, the only thing he's likely to hit is his friend's butt. Patterson detours into a room where the ballast tanks are. the good guys win. When Kowalski realized the hose wasn't moving, he knew it was time to go have Patterson's back. You okay, Patterson? Yeah. Thanks, Steve. You go on. I'll tell him back there that everything's okay. Right. Now we have two more guns. Ho, ho, ho. Get on our 
and by the surface. Ten degrees, up bubble. They're going up fast. Crane puts his scuba gear on and heads out the escape hatch. I'm not sure what he's up to, but he has a history of knowing what he's doing. done with it, Curly sold it to some guy named Bruce Wayne. The dude said something about shielding bats, but it didn't make much sense to Curly. Back the hatches. Activate blowers. I told you he knows what he's doing. While they assault the front door, he's coming in the back. Mr. Morton can't jump the rail with his gas mask on. It gets caught on things and pulls him over head first and it's just a mess. Okay, Captain, that was satisfying. Now, take the gun. Leave the cannoli. Told you. Lovely. Isn't she? You have the gun. Use it. You know I won't damage the picture. Even for the pleasure of shooting you. Picture means nothing to me, Admiral. Good help is so hard to find, but at least you don't have to pay him now. I couldn't let that... Barbarian fire. At one time I was ready to destroy her rather than to give her up. That was before I knew what it was to possess her. And I hope you enjoyed your five minutes or so of possessing her. My man, nobody possesses her. She belongs to humanity like all art. Paintings, sculptures, poetry, music, literature. Keeping it to oneself is borderline blasphemy. You may know the story of Mozart and how he listened to this super secret piece of music that the local church had come up with. To prove a point, he went home and wrote out the whole score. He gave it to them with the words, Music once played is secret no longer. And he was right. Now it belongs to the world. Oh, as a writer and musician myself, I'm in favor of the creator being properly compensated. I have no problem collecting royalties. But... If you want to use a five-second snippet of one of my songs in your YouTube video, I'm fine with it. Hey, take six seconds. They're small. I'm breathing underwater. I'm weightless through space. I'm soaring like an eagle all over this place. Creatures most will never see are waiting there to look at me. And all I got to do is breathe underwater. Use secret doc. Don't spit peanut. Pe Chip and the officer. Ah! Because the other rough, tough, big man's because of. Because of the other bar. <laughs> They're on our. Logan orders. I'm not sure why I did that bass backwards.